Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we are back with another episode of Hearthstone. Grinding out these quests, trying to get the gold, trying to become the richest of them all. Today we've got two hunter and mage victories, that's all we're going to try and do. So let's do it, let's get into it. Uh, let's play with mage first. I did make some slight changes to my mage deck when I was forced to rebuild it for Black Rock Mountain. So we'll play with that and see if that helped or hurt. I didn't make a lot of changes though. It's practically the same same concept. Jaina versus Uther. I so, will fight with honor. You asked for it. Two victories today would be great, let's see. I incre added the Violet Teacher and I think I added Flame Cannon. Both of which I think are just different ways to go, I suppose. Um, Flame Cannon, I think, is a Goblins vs. Gnome. Violent Teacher, I think, is a normal card. Dragon's Breath, I think this is almost certainly a Black Rock Mountain card. Let's see. Hmm. I'm gonna just end my turn as it is. Do nothing. Reporting for duty. But the main concept is spell damage plus up. And strong creatures and doing damage. <laughs> Don't mess with Tusk. <laughs> I have been enjoying the free preview of Epics to some point. I've been watching some bad movies, which if, I guess that's what you call enjoying, and I guess that is what I call enjoying. Uh, uh, movies like I watched, let's see if I can remember. I watched The Wolverine, which we'll just go down the list and, and see. Uh, I didn't particularly dislike the Wolverine. I thought it was eh. In a lot of ways, Reporting it didn't you. feel like any of the other X-Men movies because none of the other X-Men are there. Uh, but then you introduce these other mutants and then they're not very fleshed out at all. Uh, are we ready for the mirror image? Or we want to do two damage. Let's do two damage to all. Take their face. Smash the face. How about that? Job's done. That works. This one costs less for each minion that died. So Dragon's Breath can certainly be useful. If you do like a flame, well, you could do a flame strike, but you could do this. Arcane Explosion. Also, it costs less if your guys die. Also, pay attention, class. So keep that in mind. I can use this to summon a bunch of one-one violet apprentices, kill them off, get this down to zero. It goes, it goes down in mana cost on the uh, opponent's turn too. And then it goes back up. Let's see. Wanna play this? I'm ready to learn. And we wanna play this. And Instruction smash the begins. Uh getting into spoiler territory for the movie The Wolverine. I I think it's just weird. Uh <laughs> The guy you thought was the good guy at the beginning all of a sudden turns out to be the bad guy. And he was the mastermind behind the whole thing and the the whole movie is just this chase scene. Uh, had some problems. Definitely had some problems. Alright, if I kill two then this will cost three. If I did that. 
I want so let's try it. Four to the face. And then one to the face. And then dark end. So if I get one more of these fireballs, I could win next turn. That's pretty good. This mage deck feels like it's working a little They'll bit better. Never know what Flame strike. Take that guy this out. Smash that guy in the face. Uh, I one of the things I will say about the Wolverine, and then I'll move Sorry. on since I I didn't really pay a lot of attention to it, and it just didn't seem that good is that they, they had a lot of opportunity being set in Japan to cause, um, to do traditional uh, Japanese style fighting. And they, instead of doing that, chose to, what to, do? to just film dance fighting stuff that they often do and I think that I wasn't too happy about that I'll just leave it uh, they, they had the opportunity and they failed it really they should have should have gone with the traditional Japanese style of fighting I, it would have looked a lot more realistic I, it's not movie and it's movie-ish but they could have gone that way. They could have made this more like a Jet Li or Behold, the Jackie Chan, maybe even if you want to go comic comedic fighting styles. Alright. Silence this guy. Smash this guy. Face. This one's mine. Face. Oh, and face! No. Bet he didn't see that coming. Not that I really saw that coming. That, that was luck. Need to destroy nine more minions. Oops. Are we just gonna play the mage today? I guess we are. We'll just play the mage with the new mage deck. And then I might get into some paladin games since we had some more paladin things to do it we might get all the quests done in this recording and that's fine so that's the wolverine Dana it, it was very good uh and then it ties into days of future past somewhat which is really strange because i could have sworn that the wolverine was the one that didn't tie in but they, they've made such a huge mess on all those storylines and all of that and so what was the? I watched the movie Divergent. I I have two major problems with the movie Divergent. I thought it was a good movie. I can certainly see why a bunch of teenagers would like it. I uh, I kind of had hoped that it was going to have a surprise twist ending, but that's just me. I always hope and think there's going to be a twist ending and there almost never is. I thought the twist would have been that she was going in for the test to, that would have told her which faction she was supposed to join and then the rest of the movie from that test was was a dream in the test and she, she everything she goes through she was gonna wake up and realize that she was supposed to do that. Uh, supposed to join I guess Dauntless group or something else. Well, not join the Dauntless group, arguably. But that that wasn't the surprise. Uh, th there was one surprise in it that I didn't care for about for for and his father. That uh, that shocked me a little bit. But whatever, it wasn't. I bet it was covered in the book since this is based on the book a lot more than it was covered in the movie, where it seems like it was just mentioned in the movie. Uh, then the whole plot 
stuff is a little weird that way to go. It's it's kind of just a standard plot to put in a movie, but it, it was fun. But let, let's get. I want to get to my two main problems with it. But one main. Well, there's a third main one. The Dauntless people are, are in this whole society is just insane. That you're gonna let these kids join Dauntless and potentially be uh, kill themselves or murdered by just a completely irresponsible faction that is way too deadly, way too dangerous, to and then it made no sense how the Dauntless were gonna be the police force of the society because they seemed way too reckless and and not mature enough to do it. Uh, so, I keep, <laughs> the longer I talk, the more I find wrong with this, this movie. But, my main two things is, it makes literally no sense to their faction system. Somehow, by splitting people off into five factions, that are supposed to have these personality types that creates peace in the city and there's always peace and if you can't fit into one of the factions you, then you're factionless and, and basically homeless this it's kind of like a caste system but there's no explanation whatsoever as to how this really creates peace there's nothing in this thought that makes any sense. They just repeat it over and over and over again, saying the faction system works, it creates peace, it maintains the peace. And sure, the, the plot of the movie is that yes, it really doesn't maintain peace. <laughs> and no, it really doesn't, but I could have told you that the first five minutes of it when they were trying to sell you on the concept that there's, there's just no element. Putting people in the five groups does not magically create peace. If anything, it creates more conflict. Because then, then it's us versus them very, very clearly. Uh, and then, my biggest problem, and this is the overall theme of diversion, is it glamorizes this person uh, the main character for being divergent, being different, like, like Harry Potter does, like almost every single teen teen nom, novel, teen story does. It, people, you're different, you're special. That is great, and society in general just makes a statement. But the truth of the matter is, and somebody's got to come out and say it. And that might as well be me. You don't want to be different. You don't want to be divergent. You want to be conformist. People, at friend. their core, do not like people who are different to them. They can't relate to them. They don't want to hang out with them. They don't want to talk with them. They don't want to hire them. They don't want to uh, do their business with them. People like people they can relate to. It's just that simple. And so, no, you don't want to be different. If you can change your personality and affect your personality in any way, what you want to do is be as much like everyone else around you. That will get you successful in society. Look at politicians. What are politicians if not the most conformist things ever? They absolutely their job when they're trying to get elected is to convince everyone that they're just like them, that they think just like them, that they believe the things just like them. No politician has ever gotten anywhere by saying, I am different, I am divergent, I am not like Pay you. Attention, class. That doesn't get you elected. It just doesn't. Uh, and there is definitely a fallacy in society. Everybody is the same and likes people that are like them, and then they all lie to themselves Let and say they're special. Speak to really. me. When, I have no time objectively speaking, people aren't special. There's, if there's a special class of people, it is 
a tiny percentage. Tiny, I tiny percentage. And it's probably not you. Or you're or it's not you're not that different to really be classified as special in any way. Yeah, so this is the point where Ryder tells you you're not special, but the truth is you're not special and that's the good thing. It really is. It's what I you want. Do as you say. I shall do as you say. You don't want to be special because the special people, people who are different, aren't liked. They don't do well in society. How many uh, stereotypes have you seen when you watch uh, what's the the ones with all the fake nerd comedy show, The Big Bang Theory? You watch all those people. Those are supposed to be the smartest people around, and guess what? They have trouble dealing with regular people. That's not what you want in society. And frankly, in that fictitious show, that won't even get being smart and antisocial won't even get you a job as a scientist or a programmer or anything. You still have to be social because there's just too many people in the system. Your hiring manager, the ho the person of hum the person in charge of human yeah. resources, will not be a nerd or a computer nerd or anything. They will not overlook you asked for it. an an antisocial personality enough that you would even get the job. So there's always some normal person that you've got to convince you're just like, and so you want to conform. Absolutely, 100% in school. You want to conform as much as possible. Uh, that'll keep you from being overly ridiculed, which you'll still get ridiculed in school because school sucks. But being with the group is what you want to do. Now that doesn't mean you should. I don't know. Join a gang and do things illegal because you're not thinking big enough picture there. Joining a gang is not a big enough group. You need to join the gang of society and work with them of the good students, as it were, which is the bigger numbers. Uh, and not until there's a gang that has completely taken control of a school system at the government level. Can, would it be the smart move to join the gang? Uh, so you just want to try and blend in and not be special. And that's just not the message that ever gets sent in these movies. It, it would be a boring story in a book. It would be a boring story in a movie. I fully admit that. But that's why they call it fantasy. Because it's, it is a fantasy. Personally, I think I am, in a lot of ways, would be classified as divergent from regular people. And I can just tell you story after story of people just not liking me. It just, it, it's just that simple. People just don't like me <laughs> because I'm different. And I would do anything to go back in time and play dumb to and pretend I was the same as everyone else and like the things they like even like Don't the football uh, the fact that I kind of passionately hate sports and football in general everyone around me loves football they talk about it they worship it. It is. They spend more hours on Sunday watching football than doing anything else. Uh, and they cannot even get in their head somebody that doesn't like football. If somebody says they don't like football, you might as well have said uh, something nasty about their mother for all their can for as much as they're interested. So, if I could conform, if I could just pretend, I would do a lot better, but 
I'm such an old and bitter person now that I can't even bother to care. And it definitely hurts me. I, I I just start off at the beginning going, you're never gonna like me. I know it. You're never gonna, we're never gonna be this. Now I have found a few people that are on my level that are into video games, into programming, into computers at a very high level. And those people, when I when you meet them, you want to just uh, enjoy being around them as much as possible. That's what I try to do. It's just like, oh, you you understand what I'm saying? I don't have to dumb down my speech. I, I mean, I literally have to dumb down my speech most of the time. I can't even speak with and be understood to most people. I can't reference things uh, that I've seen that I think most people have seen because even the list of things I think most people have seen they haven't seen. It's it's so awful. It's like I'm living on an alien planet half the time. Anyways, that's a rant. What were the other movies after Divergent? Uh, it's a rant for another time. I want to do. Let's see. Uh, I watched The World's End, and I thought that was sort of funny. Uh, The World's End is the end of the Coronado series by Simon Pegg and several other comedic actors, British actors, and it involves these guys who as kids decided they were going to run through 12 uh, bars in one night and have a pint of, bar of beer at each bar, so 12 pints of alcohol. And um, and none of them made it past like the tenth. So a lot of them didn't even make it that far. And so ready for they this? they decide to try it again as adults. And then that you get to this really weird twist as they're running through these bars. They realize that everybody in their hometown where they did this pub run is what it's called. Uh, has been replaced by uh, robots basically <laughs> and that the robots have taken over the city and so they have to for a long time pretend like they're just doing the pub run and don't know and eventually they, they are just completely running away from the aliens because they get found out and so it just takes this really strange run and I thought it was it was if you understand the style of the character, it definitely helps. If you've never heard of Simon Pegg, the whole movie is going to be really just like out of left field. You're going to be like, what is going on? Why are these things happening? Uh, who even thought to make this a movie? But but I enjoyed it. So, uh, the Coronado Trilogy started with a movie called Shaun of the Dead, where uh, they're at a bar again, and it, uh, and the zombie plague breaks out, and it's a comedic zombie plague movie, uh, and then the second one is Hot Fuzz, which, uh, then they play different characters as police officers, and they go to the small town, and it turns out that there is a cult running the small town. Uh, killing people. Uh, so, it's like three movies that aren't related really at all. They're called the Coronado Trilogy because they have the same kind of comedic style and they eat this ice cream called Coronados that's popular in the UK, I suppose. Uh, mm -hmm. So, it's a silly, silly thing. Now, I've seen, there is this other Simon Pegg movie that recently came out it was about this uh, author who was just afraid of everything and terrified and it just went in this crazy way and I really didn't think it was that good really so it's not like I like all his work but I did like the Coronado trilogy I did like Hot Fuzz I did like Shaun of the Dead I did like The World's End 
uh, for their silliness. And I think that's all the movies I've watched so far. I have some other movies mm -hmm. to that I am gonna watch. I'm gonna watch like, like X Men Days of Future Past. I have that recorded and um What else do I have? I guess I'll eventually watch mm -hmm. Transcendence. But I, I hear it's a bad movie, and I'll probably just come back and say it's a bad movie. I have Netflix, and I heard that the Netflix Daredevil is out. I should go watch that. Definitely should spend the time and go watch Into the uh, Daredevil. I hear it's real good. Now, if this guy doesn't stall, we're going to get a victory here, which is great news. Uh... I haven't looked at the last thing I watched on Netflix. I don't know, I, I've certainly run out of time watching TV and stuff when I started doing all this. Into the breeze! So potential here? Let's see. He can get past my two guys, but. Oh. Well. I need a card to do some damage. You're gonna be in trouble. Maybe he can't take me out in two turns. Alright, a mirror entry will certainly help. One to the face, one to the face. It's not called mirror entry, I've done that twice. It's called mirror entity. But I misread it. I've got nothing to worry about. Let's go ahead and smash this guy in the face. He can't do anything. He's taking his time, hoping I'll give up. Interesting reaction here. The battle cry doesn't activate on mine, so I only get the the razor and hunter. I don't get the four. And we win. Good news. Is that game two? Are we really just on game two? That's another 40 gold. I like getting this gold. We are past the Blackrock Mountain cost. So now we will have about 150 gold extra at the end of the month. At least. I would love to have 3,500 at the end of the month. That would definitely help out. Definitely make things more. I need movie recommendations. Though. You asked for it. I will fight. If with if honor. you know it's on Netflix, give me a recommendation. Uh, that would certainly allow me to comment on a lot of movies I've probably already seen at the very least. If somebody says, "Watch this, watch this, watch this," I can say, "Yes, I've watched it. I've seen it." Yep. And here's what I thought of it. If there was anything to really say, I used to review movies uh, for my friends and I would write these long thousand word movie reviews uh, posts and put them up and I thought I did a really good job but I am not certain many people even read them <laughs> so
so that's why YouTube is my only hope as far as getting more people I probably will start doing long movie reviews of on these some of these episodes but just in the hope that more people will see them plus when I'm talking about the movie you I don't have to worry oh, about God. any kind of editing misspelling or any of that and I can just freeform it and that's what I did on my post too is I'd use my cell phone to voice to text uh, stuff here's the thing you, you want to know your deck backwards and forwards you want to know immediately of the five cards you draw what cards you're gonna play it should just be, oh, I see that one, that's the best one to play, play it. If you're having it ever in your deck to say, is this, or this, or this, there, there's some lack of understanding here, because these game, these cards are clearly different. It's not like they make cards that are Reporting for duty. Uh, halfway one way and halfway the other. It's like, do you want a 2-1 with charge, or do you want to give all Morlocks plus 2 health? Well, obviously you want this guy out first, and then this guy. Do you want this out? Well, if you can get this guy out and it uses your mana efficiently, yeah, use these guys. So, here we go, we draw two cards. Because I want as many of these Murlocs on my in my hand before I start start summoning them so I can get old Murkai nice and powered up. <laughs> Movies are weird. What to do? <laughs> That's a funny what statement to, to just come out with, but they really are. I have so many movies on my shelves that I just, you know, I want to go back and watch them. And I really do feel like at some point in the next decade or two, I will go back and watch them. Hopefully they won't have deteriorated mm -hmm. and melted at that point. Or whatever happens to DVDs and Blu-rays in 20 years. What it, we'll find out in 20 years. But having the free time and... and feeling like you have nothing better to do to actually do any of that is actually really rare for Oh, I was hoping one of those would be a mirror image. So this guy's gonna get vaporized, I bet. And so this one must be some anti-spell counteract or uh make him immune at the final amount of damage. Uh, yeah. So I keep I keep planning and preparing for whenever I'm retired and just have a ton of free time. And, and there's there's some logic to it, really. I don't wanna sit just sit in front of the T V and watch garbage when I'm retired. I would much prefer to have some large collection and turn around and say yes that's all ready to go so that gives the divine shield this is a pretty cool card for zero mana really nah it's a three it's a three mana card it's a pretty cool card though because anytime you're trying to power up or give divine Stop shield done. or anything it goes to this 1-3 spellbender it might be even a little overpowered there, there's certain things of course you could also be trying to kill something and then it we have might many. activate then next secret you play cause zero next secret you play is this so almost certainly that's another vaporize. Oh, Reporting for 
duty. Watch, vaporize. No, interesting, no vaporize. It actually helps me to have Murlocs on the opponent's side as much as it does to have them on my side. For old Murkai, at least. You give them more health, keep them alive, what does it matter? Next turn, Kelf the Zod. Yep, and I definitely need Kelthazar. Come on, don't, don't kill my guys, don't kill my guys. Oh, don't kill them, don't kill them. well for me. Minions, servants, soldiers of the cold Well that's definitely not gonna work well for me. Good. Alright. If we summon this, go to charge. And then we summon this. I don't have enough mana. And then summon this. For justice. We are still gonna get it. At least we're gonna try. Job done. I think this is gonna be the end of this episode too. I've run out of things to say and getting close to running out of time and so I'm just gonna finish up this game I am the essence of magic. we will come back for a third episode maybe I'll look at it and see what it takes actually I'm gonna possibly be out of the house for the rest of the day so I may take advantage of the playing on the cell phone if I have the opportunity Getting it. Getting my Reporting for duty. So, plus four, plus four for nine nine. Huh. Can we kill anything and save life? For justice! We can kill this. But I've lost. I've totally lost, and it should have killed Kelsazad. If I was gonna do anything useful. How come Kel'Thuzad always works so well for the opponent and never so well for me? <laughs> yep, looks like he's gonna win. Go ahead and win. Well played. Well played. 15 damage, really. 15 damage. Just, just really wanted to make that. I don't even know why that did 15 damage. Does is this spell damage plus five? I don't know. Um, we could do another episode. We could. I'm gonna leave you wondering. This what I'm gonna do. So we've got three victories needed for Paladin and Priest. If I get back from all the other stuff I have to do today that's not YouTube related and I haven't played on my phone and got the victories, I'll come back and do another episode. Otherwise, the next episode you're going to see, I'm going to have three new quests because I will get it done offline. And you're just going to have to wonder. So, haha -ha to you. Anyways, that's the end of this episode. As always, sorry if I'm being mean to you. I ask that you, anyway, even if I am being mean, I ask that you like, share, subscribe, comment if you want to, 
send a comment down below saying I'm a big meanie and watch every second of my videos all that helps me out with YouTube if you want to support me further through fi fan funding click on my name right though on the right will be a blue button that says support this channel any amount you donate will be greatly appreciated if you want to follow me on Twitter or Google Plus or friend me on Steam or Bell.net, all that information is down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.